This is the $1,500 Motorola Razor. I've been using it for one week and I have some big feels about it, but I also have a ton of questions still. Motorola aimed for the impossible, a flip phone that's also a smartphone, a screen that folds in half. And honestly, there is so much going for the Motorola Razr, the, the small form factor, the nostalgia, the groundbreaking design inside and out. And I absolutely love this little peak display on the front, but is it worth $1,000? $500. Okay, I'm gonna answer that, I promise. But first, I wanna answer some of the questions you ask me or the people who see me with this phone ask me all the time. And yes, there are a lot. So let's do that first. Does the razor squeak? Yes? Okay, this is my review unit, and obviously it squeaks. It's not like a like a rubber shoe sole squeaking on like a tiled floor. This is like a like a crunchy, uh, sour sound. If the sound could be sour, it's absolutely disheartening. In November, a few of us from CNET got to go to Motorola's headquarters in Chicago and spend the day with three pre-production Motorola razors. And not a single one of them squeaked. At least I don't remember. Also, I, I kind of they felt a little easier to open as well. Now, I was told these pre-production units have been used as a daily driver for about five or six months by some of the executives. So, when I hear this squeak, I think of this kind of like a new pair of leather boots possibly, like you gotta break them in to get the sound out. But then I think, this is a $1,500 phone. I don't wanna break anything in with it. I don't want it to squeak, Gary. But here's what Motorola told me. When folding and unfolding razor, you may hear a sound which is natural from the mechanical movement of the phone. So let's just talk about this mechanical movement. But essentially behind the display, or most of it, is two steel plates that both support the display, but also keep it taut in the open position. And what Motorola is saying is that the movement of these plates is causing that squeak or creak. How bad is the sound? It's not record skip loud, but it makes me sad. Does the phone have a crease? No, it does not. Well, not like the Galaxy Fold does at least. You see, that whole hinge system I was talking about earlier and those metal plates, they're designed so that when you close the phone, it doesn't create a crease on the screen. So really, as you think about it, we got either you could have the squeak or you could have the crease. The crease or the squeak. Oh boy, that's a tough decision. There are times when I'm watching a video on this screen and I could make out where the steel plates end and begin. And there's a steel plate behind this part of the screen and this part of the screen, but not in the middle. It's kind of like if you had a couch and you cover the seat cushions with a bed sheet, really taut, and you could see the space through the bed sheet between the two cushions. And that's what's happening here. Does it ruin my experience with this phone? No, it's a little sour, but it just reminds me how delicate the screen is and how thin, and it gives me a little anxiety. Is the razor durable? Well, this one's tricky. I'll wait while you laugh. Okay, so, you see, let's start with this video that Motorola released about how to take care of the phone. And in it, they say, the screen is designed to bend. Bumps and lumps are normal. So far, I have not encountered any bumps or lumps on the screen. But when are bumps and lumps actually normal? If you had any bumps or lumps on your body, you should go see a medical professional or doctor, like now, like, go do it. Bumps and lumps aside, the razor has held up pretty well. All I've noticed is some lint and occasional dust on the screen, as well as a ton of smudges on the exterior of the phone. I've used this phone for seven days and I have not seen any kind of damage to the screen or to the hinge, aside from the squeak. But it is impossible for me to know if long-term this phone is gonna handle everyday life. And the only way to know is to test it over months and months and months, using it every day. Now, a wonderful colleague of mine decided to test the durability of the phone, and he used a folding machine to fold the phone hundreds of thousands of times. Well, that was the idea, at least. He got to about 27,000 folds, and the phone did not break necessarily. It kept working. However, the hinge mechanism prevented it from being folded further. Now, I don't know how necessarily scientific or unscientific this test was. It's not really about that. 
But when you see that and you add this other anxiety I've already had about the phone, this just causes more anxiety. And any nostalgia or excitement I see about the innovative design, well, it kind of gets drowned out by that anxiety. When I started reviewing this phone, the real question for me was, is a flip phone form factor worth $1,500? And I have to say, every time I flip it open or close it or put it in my pocket, it kind of feels like it is. If this phone didn't fold in half, it would basically be a average mid-tier Android phone. Now, if you're looking for premium specs for $1,500 and you're an early adopter, the Razer's not for you. But I was surprised, actually constantly surprised by how much I absolutely loved using this phone. All right, probably the biggest thing I've noticed in using this every day is the Razer just begs to be used one-handed. Uh, everything from like flipping it up, closing it. But when you have a really tall screen, it kind of makes it hard to reach the top of it with just one hand. I find myself often using a second hand to tap a feature or bring a control panel down. But you know what, I've actually uh, like what Samsung's been doing lately with One UI and One UI 2, where they basically re-envision how you interact with a larger screen, a taller screen. They've simplified where you tap, where you press, they've moved things to the middle or to the bottom, and they actually make it much easier to use one-handed. And I would love to see Motorola bring some of that to the Razer. The display quality is good. Colors pop nicely and the contrast is crisp without looking overly sharp. The 21-9 aspect ratio is pretty fantastic, especially for films. I was watching Blade Runner and The Dark Knight and the original wide screen aspect ratio. The outside display is called the peak display. And as I alluded to before, it's actually one of my favorite things on the phone. It has a mini control panel for brightness, flashlight, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and selfies. Also, uh, I should warn you, beware of the flashlight shortcut of the front display. It will blind you and it's very hard to turn off, especially in the dark. The tap and hold an icon for a quick peek works really well and is also very discreet. Though, here's where I wish Motorola went further. It would be great to access more of Google Assistant. I, I know I can do it with my voice, but to have just even some subtle Google Assistant controls on the screen would be awesome. However, some features could actually be a little more helpful. For example, I set a timer while I was cooking the other night for like seven minutes, and when I went to check it on the display, it just said the word timer versus telling me how much time I had left. So yeah, that seems like a miss. There's a fingerprint reader on the front. It's right below the main screen. Above the fingerprint reader is an on-screen home button that you can use with the Moto Actions. One of my favorite Moto Actions is called One Button Navigation. Basically, uh, what this would do when it first came out on the Moto G5 Plus is it kind of turned the fingerprint reader into basically a trackpad for your phone. And I love that feature. Now, on the Razer, that's not the case. Instead of using the actual fingerprint reader, you have to reach over the fingerprint reader and touch the on-screen home button to trigger the same actions. Uh, it just seems a little clunky. I always say buttons are important. Yeah, I know, I'm weird. But honestly, they are one of the easiest things to mess up on a phone. And now Motorola faced a challenge with the buttons they have on this phone. We have the volume rocker and the home button, and they have to work both when the phone is open as well as when the phone is closed. So the position feels right to me. It's really the size. The buttons feel too small and sometimes hard to distinguish despite the fact that the wake button has a texture on it. If you have not heard, the Razer in the United States is exclusive to Verizon. I don't really have a problem with that, but I do have a problem with all the bloatware Verizon put on this phone. Seriously, it's 2020. Why is bloatware still a thing? I removed most of it, though I have to admit I did like the Game of Thrones experience thing. So, call me hypocrite. All right, then there's the battery. So, uh, the Razer actually has a very small battery, 2,500 milliamp hours. So, I still have a ton of battery testing to do, but I was able to run one of our battery tests. And what I did is I played a video on a loop setting in airplane mode at 50% brightness. And the Razer lasted 13 hours and three minutes, which is definitely respectable. In everyday use, 
The battery was pretty good. I got through most of a day. I found myself having to top off around dinner time versus say like bedtime. That said, I look forward to using this phone when I'm not reviewing it to see if it can actually get through a normal day. The Motorola Razr basically has one camera that doubles for selfies and the rear camera. It's decent, but isn't at the level of the Pixel 4, iPhone 11, or Galaxy Note 10. Photos in good light are sharp with nice contrast, but as soon as you are in medium to low light, things start to fall apart. There's lots of image noise, or what I've noticed the Razer does a lot is it tries to compensate with a longer shutter speed, leading to blurred motion. Video, well, it's there, it's fine. You're not gonna be making a movie with a Razer. But let me tell you about a really fun feature they use the external display for. When it detects a face in the frame, it will throw up a cartoon emoji on the camera. Now this is great for getting kids' attention or maybe an inebriated adult's attention so you can get them looking at the camera in the right place. It's really fun, it's frivolous, but it makes me happy. All right, before you comment, now technically there is a second camera on the Motorola Razr. It's on the inside uh, atop the display where the notch is. It's purely used for video chat. Yeah, it's there. Hey, but let's wrap this review up. At the beginning of this video, I asked the question, is the Moto Razr worth $1,500? To me, it's not. And here's why, because the amount of anxiety I have about the build, the durability, the bumps and the lumps, even though I haven't experienced any problems with this, it just kind of wipes out all the fun I have with the nostalgia and the flip. That being said, I don't think Motorola's on the wrong right track. In fact, I think this is a tremendous phone and I can't wait to see what the next version of it is. If there's a Razer 2 or a premium Razer with better cameras or even a, a lower end Razer that might have a lower price point. For more about the Motorola Razer, check out my full review on CNET.com. I go much more in depth on the settings and some other problems I had with the phone as well as some other really cool features. But until then, 